Hey guys, and welcome back to UseTheBlender.net. My name is Philip Homiser, and this is probably one of the most random tutorials I could have created right now at the end of August. <coughs> it's probably 90 degrees outside today. I have no idea what the inspiration came from to create snowflakes, but anyway, here it is. This is going to be a really quick tutorial, so go ahead and open up Blender. Uh, just open up a new scene. Actually, I already have a new one in here, so it doesn't matter. Just delete the default cube. And I'm going to use. Uh, actually, before doing anything, switch to Cycles, Render Engine, because we're going to use Cycles. And go to Import and Image as Plane. And I found, uh, I just, uh, let's see if I can remember where I put my, there we go, ice, snow. I, I, I just Googled snowflakes and came up with, found these snowflakes on a blog. I'll see if I can post the link. But I just, I was looking for, just a white snowflake with a black background so I could um, kind of key it out in other words so <clears throat> let's rotate that 90 degrees actually let's just move it oh well, you know what before I forget I'll turn my screencast keys on so you can tell what I'm doing let's press M and move this to a new layer so we don't have to look at it in that layer and then I'm gonna zoom up here and go ahead and open up render mode so we can see it and let's go to the world settings and change this just to white just change the background white because it's going to be snowing we want it to be white so let's go ahead come down here and open up the node editor put materials uh, is that it? well that was easy okay now let's see if I can remember how to do this? <clears throat> uh, let's see. Actually, let's duplicate this. Just put it up here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to get rid of the black and just have the snowflake. So uh, let's create. Go to color and click invert. Let's drag color over to this color and let's add a uh, mix node. If I can find it. There we go. Mix shader. And put this in the factor settings. Just drag this down here. Go ahead and put this in shader. Get that out of there. Go ahead and put this in there. And uh, go ahead and go to sh uh, put a transparent shader right here. And that should get rid of it. There we go. So that looks pretty cool. That pretty much got rid of it. So now, as always, uh, actually, I don't even think I have. Did, did I open up? What did I call this? Snowflake tutorial or something? <laughs> I'm in Blender, right? Uh, Blender tutorials. How to make snowflakes. Here we go. And you can see I've already done this a couple of times. So let's call this uh, three. Go ahead and save it. So we can save often. Now go ahead and click the snowflake. Uh, click Shift D to duplicate. <coughs> duplicate. Drag it over here, and we'll go into um, material. Uh, material over here, and click this little two. So this will become a separate texture as that one. And now we'll just uh, go in here and open up the other snowflake because we want two different snowflakes in here. Open up that one before. Let's open up this one. Uh, let's go ahead and come down here. Go ahead and put one in there too. So now we got two of them. There we go. Pretty easy. <clears throat> That's just two planes. So now we'll go back into our other layer. And we'll just put a plane down there. And we'll go to top view. And just scale it up to about the same size as... There we go. The grid. Uh, go ahead and delete the default white. Let's drag this up a bit. And we are going to use the particle system to create these snowflakes. So let's go over to the go ahead and switch over there. Add a particle system. And uh, let's go ahead and open up the timeline. So now if I press Alt A, you can see those particles coming down there. So now what we want to do is we'll come down here to 
render uh, and go to group select oh wait a minute I forgot something go back to the other layer go ahead and grab those two snowflakes and press uh, shift no let's see <laughs> control G and we'll name that group snowflakes I don't know why it's already called snowflakes but anyway so now we just created a group out of those call them snowflakes so let's go back here now that group should be in here click snowflakes voila there they are they're really small so let's go ahead and make them a little bigger <clears throat> yeah well like that and go ahead and set random just turn it all the way up that will kind of that way that snowflakes are all different sizes <clears throat> Now, uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and hit rotation. I'm not sure why, it just seems like a good thing to do. <laughs> uh, click emitter, turn that off. That way, um, when you render it, it won't render this plane up here. It'll make that plane invisible, if I understand it right. You should tell you. Render emitter object also. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay, uh, we'll go over here to rotation and turn random all the way up. Uh, didn't seem to do anything. Did I do that right? <clears throat> uh, okay, oh, let's see. Let's go ahead and set this to. Oh, I know why I didn't do anything. We'll go ahead and set it all the way up and restart your. Just put this all the way back to one and restart. It should be random now. There we go. Now they're all just kind of all over the place. Now there's not enough snowflakes there. I want like way more. <clears throat> so uh, let's set this to 250 frames. And we'll set the number of emissions to something more like 20,000. <clears> there we go, and go ahead and start that. And let's just go in here, and actually if you go into render mode, you'll see them all now. You see all the snowflakes. So if you once you find a good spot, press Control, Alt, Zero, and it'll snap the camera to that spot. <clears throat> and now uh, we'll just we'll just move the camera around until you find what you you know whatever you want your scene to look like. Can okay, just find some snowflakes. You know, just just move around until you get the scene you want. Here's a snowflake right here. So kind of want to get some more in the background. So maybe actually here's kind of a cool thing I just learned. If you click lock camera you can actually move around just as if you didn't have the camera selected and the camera will stay right where it's at so that's pretty cool so now we can just move around here until we find a good spot <clears throat> try to speed this up a little bit here we go there's a snowflake <laughs> yeah yeah, let's, uh, let's go with that. Rotate this over a little bit. Try to get some more in the in the background. Try to get the snowflake kind of head on. <clears throat> there we go. I'll get some in the foreground and the in the background as well. So there, that's pretty good. Yeah, now we got we can see one of each kind of snowflake there. Now what I like to do is uh, select the camera and go over to the camera settings click uh, well actually it doesn't really matter click limiter and then you can see it uh, the, if you go out of here you can see where that's at now we're just going to add depth of field <clears throat> so go back into into render view here and we'll click uh, f-stop turn that on and you can tell everything just kind of went fuzzy uh, go ahead and turn lock camera off so we can zoom in here a little bit and start turning the distance up so you can see everything coming into focus. We we'll just keep doing that until uh, I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to focus on this snowflake here. So I'm going to zoom in here so I can tell when it's good and focused. And once it starts going blurry again, it means you've gone too far. So back up. That's probably as about as good as it's going to get right there. 700. <clears throat> There we go. All right, looks pretty good. Now, we'll go ahead and give that a quick render. Um, 
50. Let's see. Go ahead and go into my sampling. Turn that to like 50. Let's go ahead and render that. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and go into the node editor. And let's go ahead and open that up. Uh, <clears throat> let's go into the output settings and grab a viewer node. That way we can. Whoops. Let's see what we're working with here. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to create like a silhouette as well as I want to make it a little more crisp using a uh, using RBG curves so let's start out by grabbing a lens distortion node set that to set the distortion to one <clears throat> and let's go to blur, blur node connect that there and let's go ahead and set that to fast Gaussian uh, quick relative X and set this to like 20% 20%. And let's go ahead and grab a color mix node. And go ahead and connect those. And just connect this to there. You can see that <coughs> coming out now. What we're going to do is go in here and click multiply. There we go. Now you can adjust the silhouette by adjusting the factor settings. Turn that down. Now let's go ahead and add the uh, RBG curves. Put that in there. We can go ahead and reconnect those. <coughs> and now just grab this slider, and drag it down a little bit. Just to make it pop a little bit. There we go. That's about it for this tutorial. Um, let's give that one final render. Except this time, let's set the settings, uh, bring that to 100%, put the settings up to something more like, I think my final render was like 2000, which is probably way too much because um, usually if the image is, has dark areas in it, um, It'll have a lot of noise, but this has no dark areas in it at all. So let's go ahead and just do like 500, or probably just uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, let's just do 100, and go ahead and give that a render. And I'm going to pause it and just let it render, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So here's what we came up with. That's about it. Um, so that's kind of a conclusion to this tutorial. Um, hope you guys got a lot out of this. Hope you had fun with it. Um, just let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any more ideas for any other tutorials, anything you'd like to learn, just put in the comments. Uh, I'd also like to see what you guys come up with. Um, so put that in the comments as well. So I uh, hope you guys hope this is useful to you and I will see you next time.